A hovercraft rides on a cushion of air. This enables the craft to travel both over land and sea. The concept actually dates back to 1870, but it wasn't until the middle of the 20th century that British inventor Sir Christopher Cockerell perfected the idea and got it off the ground. This model of hovercraft is equipped with a single fan. It both inflates the skirt, lifting the vessel about 25 centimeters, and then creates thrust to propel the hovercraft over almost any surface. Production begins with a hull made of lightweight polyethylene. The fabricator installs aluminium skids on the bottom to protect the hull during landings on rough surfaces. He screws plastic attachments for the hovercraft skirt into pre-marked positions on the hull. The technician drills 65 holes around the hull. The fan's air will pass through these holes to fill the hovercraft skirt. The hull consists of a thick hard outer layer and a low density inner layer that makes the construction buoyant. It's what keeps the hovercraft afloat when it stops on water. The crew now fastens the seat basin console in the front of the hull. Once it's secure, they fit the gauge panel in its slot. The team then moves to the back of the hull to install the drive belt, pulley and the main drive frame. This pulley will transfer power from the engine to the fan. Once they confirm everything moves freely, they assemble the fan to the main drive frame with high tension bolts. This duct will divide the fan's air into two streams. One stream will be directed under the craft to provide lift. The other will be channeled out the back to generate thrust. They now return to the cockpit to attach the handlebars to a steering mechanism. The engine can be either two-stroke or four-stroke, depending on the amount of power required. They connect it to the drive assembly and protect that connection with metal casing. Once the engine has been bolted into place, they equip it with a radiator, an air filter and the exhaust system. They then connect the fuel tank to the engine and cover the engine with a polyethylene housing to keep it dry. They install seating, including a rear bench that can accommodate three people. Then the installer attaches two rudders to the fan dock. He links them with a bar so they'll move in tandem. These steering parts are made of marine grade steel to prevent them rusting. A quick check confirms the rudders are operational. The hovercraft skirt is made of the same material used on shoe soles, sturdy polyurethane nylon. They assemble the skirt to the hull in 65 different pieces. The worker loops each segment over a side bumper and secures it with a steel clip. He then attaches the bottom of each skirt piece to the hooks on the hull. He uses plastic cable ties for this job and there's a good reason. If the skirt becomes snagged on something, these ties will break and free that section. Then other parts of the skirt will balloon out to fill the breech and maintain the air cushion. And they also won't have to replace the whole skirt, just the section that's been damaged. After a final inspection, they take this hovercraft for a test spin. They check the steering and overall performance and enjoy gliding on air. And just like its power plant, he looks like he is a really big fan. Can I have a go?